Howdy everyone, Pocha here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we'll be doing the Hero Spotlight for Demetria, the ranged damager for the Assassin's Guild, the fifth playable character, so you now will have a full faction ready to go. We'll be going over her stats, her abilities and having a bit of a play around with her in the arena, but going over her stats, hit points coming up 8.1 million, speed 213, armor 132k, magic damage resistance 118k, basic damage 821k, critical hit chance 41%, which is quite high, and critical damage 1.5 million, just shy of 1.6. Going over the more in-depth stats, the information is there for you to use however you see fit. Feel free to take it. Post it anywhere, do whatever you want with it. So there you go. So let's jump into the arena now and have a look at this character's abilities. Moving into the arena, we have Demetria's basic whip strike triggers the range damage of class mark. Cast hit list on the target it is removed upon target's death or transferred to another target. The target on the hit list becomes vulnerable to enemy skills regardless of restrictions. Hit list ignores fortitude when cast, removed upon target death or transferred to another target. If the target is on the hit list dies, the skill enters a cooldown for two turns. Now, that's just the ability looks massive, but it's literally just describing hit list. That's not the important part. Let's go into what the basic actually does. Deals damage to one target. When placed on the hit list, the target loses all buffs. So, as you can see, the enemy of Brynhild, I keep going to call her Valkyrie, Brynhild. I don't know if there's any removable buffs on there, but we'll go ahead and use the basic attack. And as you can see, it strips the buffs. So honestly, I'm a massive fan of this basic attack. Using her in combat, I often find myself trying to get hit list on a specific target so I can cast the basic and get rid of the buffs, especially when versing a faction like the Knights of the Council who have plenty of buffs, though they do have buff protection there's still just the ability to get rid of buffs at some point is really good, especially against for someone like Siegfried, for example, when he has a taunt, trying to get rid of that. So I think this is an amazing basic attack. And to be honest, I, I sometimes prioritize it over any of her actual abilities. So yeah, definitely a top tier, I think, ability. The only downfall is it obviously has to be cast on a character with hit list. Moving into Demetria's second ability, double the pain trick is the range damage of class mark. Attack twice in a row. For each debuff on Demetria, the damage is increased by 10%. If the target is on the hit list and their HP during one of the two attacks is below 35% of the max HP, then the final damage from the attack will increase by 100%. So we're going to go ahead and use it on the librarian here, though we will not be able to see the buff damage. But as you can see, it can, it can do a lot. You can do a lot. So she has the ability to output some decent damage. Though, remember, in a situation, you've got to determine the team you're versing. What's more important, for example, doing a lot of damage, potentially eliminating a target, or removing buffs from someone else. That's the difficulty with the Assassin's Guild. It's the hit list. You really need to analyze the situation because the hit list plays such an important part. Do you want to trigger the hit list? Do you want to use an ability that triggers the hit list? Do you want to move the hit list? There's a lot to it. It's not all about just pressing. It's just, it's not a team you can press auto on. You really need to consider what you're doing and the situation your team and the enemy team is in. So she has the ability to do a lot of damage. So that is in the kit as well. Moving into Demetria's third ability, Garden of Thorns triggers the range damage of class mark. Takes HP equal to 6% of their max HP from all allied rogues and assassins. Deals damage to all enemies. Additionally, deals damage equal to the amount of HP taken with this skill from the allies. If at least one ally dies from this skill, then the damage from it will ignore armor, will be critical, and is guaranteed to hit the target. If one of the targets was on the hit list, the target receives the retribution debuff. If the debuffed target uses a special ability, 25% of their max HP will be taken away. So we're gonna go ahead and use the ability. Look at the animations, spins, and librarian already had low health, but he's eliminated. So there you go. Very interesting ability. The only condition to it that I'm not a fan of is the if an ally is killed with it. It's a very very situational you have no control over your allies health and in saying that the renegade team not renegade sorry the assassin's guild team and 
any rogues that are on the team have immense damage reduction except for Yuki, who can gain damage reduction with her parry ability. So the whole idea of the Assassin's Guild is that they are just... They're tanky to begin with. They're trying to eliminate a target as fast as possible or targets as fast as possible before Yuki's parry is taken away and then she is taken out and then the team crumbles from there. So it's a very, very quick team. It needs to get the job done quickly or it will most likely be ineffective. So... In saying that, it's hard to be in a situation, I think, where you will find targets with low enough HP that this ability will kill them. So that's the only part of the ability I'm not a fan with. The rest of it is pretty decent. Lots of damage, has the potential to add a massive HP percent burn to a target. And again, that plays into a part of manipulating the hit list. Where do you want it? Who do you want it to be on? Who do you want to give this to? Who are you taking 25% max HP from when they use abilities. So again, you've got to consider, has the unit you're targeting use their special abilities? If they have, this is going to be ineffective. So yeah, there is a lot to it. This is a very, very complicated faction. There's uh, many ways you can play it. And yeah, we'll move on to the passive now and that will wrap her up and then we'll jump into a battle. Jumping into the passive, and there is a lot to it. A, a little bit has been cut off the top, unfortunately, but I'll read it from the screen. While hidden, Demetria each time performs a support attack on the same target that an allied assassin or rogue attacks. This attack is increased by 10% per debuff on Demetria. So the whole idea as well with the assassins is they are constantly getting debuffs applied to themselves. Claudia Toxic, for example, is a great character that can apply debuffs to characters, especially her allies. So she's able to gain more damage from that. With a 20% chance per allied assassin or rogue, when an ally dies, Demetria creates a copy of herself in their place for three turns, only triggers once every eight turns. All stats of the copy are inherited from the killed ally, skills at the lowest upgrade level, not passive skills. The copy dies automatically at the end of combat. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about with that is when it says end of combat, I assume... That means that, for example, in Cradle of Chaos, that you can keep the copy moving on to the next wave, but obviously at the end of the round, when you win or lose and then re-enter or move on to the next fight, that copy will no longer be present. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the last part, any Demetria's... Any, any of any of Demetria's attacks can remove an enemy buff that affects the amount of damage taken and is removable by an attack. The buff is removed before damage is received. Each time another ally receives debuff, Demetria recovers 10% of her initiative. So that's obviously in play. We all know him, her. Here is it. She is able to counter characters like that that can apply... Um, damage reduction. Brynhild is also one of them. So she's able to remove that buff before she initiates the damage. So it's not going to affect her damage at all. So that's very good as well. And there doesn't seem to be a cooldown on that either. So she's constantly able to remove that buff from targets. Any Dimitri's attack can remove an enemy. Yes, any of her attacks will remove that buff. So fairly, fairly good in controlling enemy utili uh, utility. So, yeah, I mean, I don't really see characters from... I, I don't see Rarachni standing up to this faction anyway, uh, but it's there. It's there. There will, be, there will be characters in the future that will carry this buff, so that will be important to remember because this team may be a counter to those future teams. So yeah, overall, very interesting character. Um, she offers a lot, but as I said, the faction as a whole is a very complicated faction. It does take time to get used to how to play it. Every situation is going to be different. And normally at the beginning of the fight, you may find yourself in a different circumstance as the hit list is always applied to a random target bar the tank. So just keeping that, that in mind, it's a, it's a faction that needs to be played on the most part on the manual and not auto. Um, I think it has the potential to do very good in Cradle of Chaos. I think it has the potential to do really good in possibly future content. 
Um, it just is a very strong team in terms of defense and just being able to survive. And it just gets a little bit stronger as the fight goes on. So, But their main strength is from the first one or two rounds when they are built to just eliminate a, a target. Let's go bang, bang. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we'll just jump into a battle. You've seen these guys versus the Knights if you've watched my last video, but we'll do one battle and this time we'll actually be able to explain what's happening and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, so jumping into battle, we have a librarian. He's put the counter on us. So we're just going to use our basic attack, get rid of some buffs off him. Um, we can only really attack him. We are going to go get our parry up. And then we are going to eliminate Librarian. He, <coughs> he will be resurrected in a moment. So we're going to go ahead and... Lunacy doesn't apply. The Siegfried is going to be a pain. We're going to go ahead and use AoE. Demetria. The idea is that we are going to have to try and bypass this... Uh, Siegfried, we need to get past the taunt so we can eliminate some of the more threatening targets on the team. Siegfried isn't so much a threat, he's just an absolute wall and we need to bypass him, otherwise we are in trouble. Okay, so, so Dimitri is going to be able to get rid of the taunt in a moment. Beautiful, we're going to start moving over. <clears throat> okay, let's take out this G. Okay, we need to eliminate her so she cannot heal. Beautiful. Now we are in trouble of losing the Yuki. If we lose Yuki, we are in trouble because that's where all the defense is coming from. If we lose... Y oh, that was a lucky attack from Brynhild there. It didn't hit the Yuki. It would have killed her. Parry's back up, so we're safe. We pretty much win this from this point. Um... There's nothing they can do if they've lost the damage and beautiful. I mean, that's what I mean. You gotta re you gotta think about what you're doing. Ah, oh, everything plays a part. It's a game of chess with this team. But we are Grandmaster uh, raking uh, rating two thousand three hundred in chess. So I don't know. It's just child's play to us, really. But there you go. There is Demetria. There is the Assassins Guild at full force. But also remember, they have a bit of accessibility. You can put other rogues in. So remember, as rogues come out, they could be powerful ones. This team is going to have the ability to just mix and match for a while. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability. And whenever you're around the world, until next time, please take care of yourself.